happening, Turbo Toys here. But you can call me Turbo and today, Sonic Boom! We're hitting Sonic Booms, baby. Now, I'll level you boys. I've never really been much into playing fighting video games. I was more of a kid in the arcade to watch my older brother play, because I was never very good. Nor did I have a really good attitude about losing when playing them. But, as for the characters in these games, I absolutely loved them. We grew up together. My favourite character on Street Fighter 2 Turbo, on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, was Gaul. But that only was down to one simple reason. The only move I knew how to do was the Sonic Boom. So being fans of Street Fighter, me and my brother also collected the G.I. Joe style action figures, but it just wasn't the same as what we see now with companies like NECA and SH Fig Arts and Stone Collectibles to name a few. And we used to have a great collection, but they get lost and broken along the way. And as much as we really loved these figures back in the day, they just don't cut it compared to what these modern companies are doing with these figures in terms of articulation and all that. But I'm not saying that we didn't have fun with these figures. They was amazing for back then. The only trouble with these newer figures is the price point. It's ridiculous. So being a customiser, why not try and do it yourself? Panic boom! So boys, for the people that are not familiar with how and what I use to customise, I heavily customise the WWE Mattel Elite resting figures. Every now and again, I like to cross paths with another realm. So the first thing we do is we get some parts together for the base to make this goal. So who better to use for an all-American, American-style character than John Cena? This skin has a perfect facial expression that we want our goal to have. So the first thing we've got to do is mix up some sculpting clay to make Gaul's hair and sculpt the rest of the tank top. And this genuinely takes up most of the time because you have to wait for the clay to cure, sand down any imperfections and apply more clay until you're happy with the outcome. And boys, I'm never happy. Yeah? That's mainly because I'm not that good a sculptor. So as we wait for our clay to cure, and we're happy to move on, we prime the figure and start to paint what we can. Then we start to mix up and apply the appropriate green colours for our goal, as well as adding browns to the boots. Then I move on to painting details like the belt with the buckle and starting to get everything else ready for a coat. So with the hair dryer and ready, I start to lay down the base coat of yellow before I start to add stuff like washes and dry brushing for the effect. It's another situation where you might have to go back and forth with your colours, unlike me, unless you actually know what you're doing, but i get there eventually. I think the colours are very important and I always try and stay true to the original concept. So with it all starting to take shape, I'm able to add more details like the camo in the cargo pants and also washes to the skin tone. So as we start to approach the finishing line on this one, boys, we finish off his design for his dog tag accessory as well as making and applying the American flag decals and then BOOM! Our awesome and realistic goal figure is complete, boys. I absolutely love the look of this and the way it turned out. I'm over the moon. What I do love as well is with these Mattel figures, you can just pose them exactly the way you want to pose them if you're displaying them. As well as if you were going to do fight scenes as well for figure photography, like these figures, these Mattel figures just give you enough articulation to pull off a really, really good photograph. So the idea of this came from, I was in a custom competition where you had to do a wrestling and video game crossover. I ended up making a Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. And I took a bit of every variation that we see from Scorpion from the different Mortal Kombat games, but... Based on how much fun this was, I'd love to go back and make like standard versions of the ninjas. And I know people buy them figures for the comic book slash video game aspect. I'd love to do more video game characters using Mattel parts and giving them that somewhat realistic look. But if you're unfamiliar with the articulation on these WWE Mattel wrestling figures, then let me show you. Starting with the head, we can see it tilts both left and right, both forward and back. And it can also spin all the way around. The arms can also do a 360 and move out this much. It does have an upper bicep rotation as well as single jointed elbows. It has a rotation on the wrist as well as a hinge so you can move that back and forth. Moving on the ab crunch goes forward about this much and it goes back as far as this. It does have full rotation on the waist joint as we move further down the figure, this figure is on ball joints, which I do believe allows you to get the best out of doing kicking poses. It allows you to get really good height when posing with these figures. The figure does also have a double jointed knee, as well as a full rotation on the top of the boot. It has full rotation on the top of the fire. It does have a rocker. But unfortunately, the forward and back motion on this figure, the joints are frozen, so you do get that sometimes with these Mattel figures. But take nothing away, boys. You still get the awesome ability to make some really good poses with these figures. But yeah, definitely, like I said, I'd love to do more Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter-based figures. 
But I really want to know, boys, what kind of characters would you like to see from these style of video games? I remember seeing King from Tekken, and that figure was amazing. But he's going to do it for this one, boys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Come see my other custom work on Instagram, at Turbo Toys. And until the next video, boys, I will see ya. When I see ya. Panic move!